We're going to look at the closing entry notes and worksheet today. So some of the notes that we have to look at, we see that there are permanent accounts and then there are temporary accounts. Your permanent accounts are going to include all of your balance sheet accounts. They are going to relate to one or more future periods and we do not close these accounts. For temporary accounts, these are accounts related to only one accounting period. They are going to include all of your income statement accounts as well as your drawing accounts. And all of these accounts must go to zero at the end of the period, which means they must close. Now the order that we close accounts in is um, R, E, I, D, or read. And so what we start with here is revenues. So revenues are gonna to close to our income summary account. Expenses will close to our income summary account. Our income summary account is gonna to close to capital. And our drawing is gonna to close to capital. So what we see with this adjusted trial balance that we're looking at here is that we do have our accounts and our accounts are in order. Um, and we have all of our asset accounts are located here. And then what we can see are our liability accounts. We then have our owner's equity here. We have a revenue account here. And then we list out our expenses accounts. So they are in order of number and they do all go together, which is really nice because then we can look at it and we can use this adjusted trial balance to close our accounts. We can also use it to prepare financial statements with. And so what we look at here is if we take the capital account, for instance, and if I just come through and I kind of draw, and I'm going to actually do one above and below my capital account. Reason being is that everything above capital is a permanent account and it um, stays the same, which means it will not close. The capital account is also a permanent account. However, the amount is going to change when we look at our capital account. And then anything that we have below the capital account is considered a temporary account, which means that these need to go to zero. So all those stuff will close. Um, again, the order that we close our accounts um, is going to um, B, and what we're looking at in closing our accounts um, is the order is R E I D. So the first thing that we look at closing is our R accounts. And so when we look at R, um, in this case we only have one R, notice that it has a credit balance. So if I wanted this balance to go to zero, I would have to um, debit my service revenue account. And so when I look at R, what I'm going to do, um, you know, on 1231, I'm going to have a debit to service revenue for 31,900, and I am going to have a credit to an account we call income summary. Income summary is a holding account for us. It's to help us look and see, you know, what our income is. Um, and so I do want to create a T account for income summary just so that I can keep up with what that balance actually is. Um, so that's what we look at for income summary. Uh, the other accounts, or the next one is E, which is our expense accounts and so when we're closing our expense accounts we are going to be closing everything that is an expense. Notice they all have balances that are on the debit side so if I want to make that balance zero I would then have to credit those accounts and so the account that is our debit account is going to be this income summary account. 
Now what I like to do is write out income summary. I put a box here because I know that I need to come back and I need to put those totals in for my income summary. Um, and then from there, it's just looking at those credit accounts. And so I have, you know, salary expense is at 4,500. I have repair expense at 800. I'm going to have supply expense at 1600. And I'm really just kind of going down this list. I'm going to have depreciation expense valued at 1000. And then I'm going to have gasoline expense at 3800. And so at this moment, what I would be looking at here is I need to take all these amounts and I need to add them because I need to know what that total value um, is going to be. And so when I add these amounts, what I'm going to end up with Um, is eleven thousand um, seven hundred, and so after I add that up and I get the eleven thousand seven hundred, that is where that balance is going to go is to the eleven thousand seven hundred. So now I do have income summary here at eleven thousand seven hundred, and I will need to balance out my income summary. So the balance here that I'm going to get is going to be 20200 This side's the bigger side, so that means that's what side it's going to go on. Um, and so I do have that for income summary. So the next closing entry that I have is that I, which is for income summary. Notice that it is a credit. So if I want to zero this out, then I need an entry for income summary on the debit side. So what I'll see here is I will have that income summary on the debit side for 20200 and that is going to close to the capital account. So I would have capital for that 20200 So what this does for me now is, as far as capital goes, I was at 3000 I now have that 20200 that is going into there because I do have a profit um, for that particular account. The last entry that I have is the D, and that's for the drawing account. So we look at drawing, it does have a debit balance. If I want to make this zero, that means that that would have to be the credit. And I do close this to the capital account, so the capital account would actually be the debit account, and that is going to be for that drawing amount, which is 12,000 and so that drawing would then be that 12,000. So if I were to go through and post all of these accounts, what I'd find out is that literally all of these would have gone to zero and they would no longer exist on any of my statements or any of my on my trial balance or ledgers or any of that. Um, I also would have to po finish out posting to figure out what my new capital balance was going to be. And so when I finish this out, you know, I have 12000 on this side. On this side, I have $23,200. Um, and so then it's just about taking those amounts um, and looking at what my new balance in this capital account is going to be. And that is going to be the 11000 200. And so that's really looking at those closing entries. Now, if I wanted to look at what would happen in this instance, if I were looking at the post-closing trial balance, what I would find for that post-closing trial balance is after everything is said and done, um, all of these amounts are going to stay the same because they did not close out. Um, that 3000 would then change to this 11200 
Um, and so that would be the new amount that you would have for that capital account. And so what we would see if we finished everything out is that we would come back in and we would have um, all of these different things. And so for the post-closing trial balance, what you would see is you would have ABC Company. This would be the post-closing trial balance. for December 31st, 2017. And so when we list those out, it's gonna look just like this and that we are going to have you know, our account, we will have our debit, and we will have a credit. And so we have cash, and cash was valued at 6,800. We still have our accounts receivable, valued at 2000 because none of these values changed at all. We're going to have our supplies valued at 500 um, We then have our truck for 8500 We would have our equipment, and our equipment's valued at 6300 Uh, we have accumulated depreciation, and that's at 1000 We have accounts payable. Accounts payable is valued at 3500 We would then look at our notes payable. Notes payable is valued at, looks like two, whoop, let me see, looks like I've, all right, so accounts payable is here, notes payable is at 8,200, we would have our salary payable at 200, Uh, and then that is all of those accounts that did not change. And then we get to our capital account, which changed to 11.2. So we would come in, we would put our capital account in, we would put 11,200 here. So now we are at the point where we can look at our totals. And what we are looking at at this point is do our debits and our credits balance out. Uh, so right now it looks like I have 64,100 on this side. So let's see what I have on the other side. And I have 24,100 on this side. So I am in balance. Remember that when I finish a column and I finish the statement, I would have a dollar sign and I would also have a double underline, those should balance out and they in fact do. Um, and so that is what we would look at for our closing entries. This is what we would look at for our post-closing trial balance. Um, so on that post-closing trial balance, we would only have the permanent accounts because everything else had closed to zero.